Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm glad you joined us today. We're going to have a show talking about weaning, and it's something that we go through with our calves every fall. It's a very stressful time for the calf and the cow. So stay tuned, we're gonna learn more about some different methods that work and maybe don't work so well. To spur performance and productivity in your herd, look to Bovalus Vision 7, powered by the proprietary spur adjuvant, allowing smoother administration and fewer reactions for effective low-stress clostridial protection. And low stress equals higher weaning weights, a proven 14 pound advantage. With a gain like that, you're spurring profits too. That's what you get with the number one clostridial vaccine for calves, proven protection that spurs all around forward progress. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson and I am a veterinarian, uh, owner and partner in production animal consultation where we see cattle all across this country. Um, also a professor at Iowa State University. And today we're gonna to talk about something that I have worked with uh, all my career and that's weaning calves. Sometimes we get calves at the feedlot that are balling and they're very, very difficult. They're walking, they're looking for mom, they're not settled down. We get these calves that have been properly weaned, properly managed prior to coming to us. They know what a feed bunk is, they know what a water tank is, they've been vaccinated, castrated. They, are, they, they have decreased morbidity, decreased mortality, improved performance, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, is how do we get those calves prepared and what are some of the best ways? Because our industry is so different than other industries. You think about, the, the swine industry where the mom's with the piglets in a fairing crate and there's really not that interaction because we want to keep the mom separated from those piglets, but they, they're in there for 21 to 28 days. Uh, a dairy calf is pulled away from its mom the first day. The chicks and, and poultry and turkeys, they come in a box on day one after hatching. Um, but we take this cow and this calf and we ask that cow to do a job. We have that cow out on the pasture and we say, hey, we would like you to raise this calf, protect this calf, feed this calf, uh, take care of it and uh, teach it, right? Teach it how to work within our pastures and within our systems to weather storms and to fight off varmints and different things to that nature. And we ask them to do that for seven months and they form a bond. They form a maternal bond with the calf and the calf with the mother. So then with this strong bond, when we go to wean that, that baby, it's a very stressful time or can be a stressful time on the baby and on the mother. And, you know, preconditioning these calves and, and different types of maternal separation. Uh, maternal separation is just a part of preconditioning. And preconditioning is so important to our industry. And you think about uh, just abrupt weaning uh, and just taking that calf off the cow. You know, there was a point in time where I was a school board member at Riley County schools in in riley kansas and and i went into our principal brad starnes who's superintendent and i said you know i want to make an impact i i um, i'm a new school board member and we do some things in the beef industry that i think can really help the school system and he says well, what do you got in mind and i said you know there's two things that a kindergartner has to have before they can come to riley county schools they got to have a record of immunization and they've got to have a, a social security card 
And I think we can do some things like we do in the beef industry that can really decrease the paperwork, improve the efficiency. First thing we're gonna do is get rid of kindergarten roundup. There's no need for those kids to be acclimated to their environment prior to getting there. They don't need to know who their caregiver is or where the lunch line is or where the bathroom is or where the water fountain is. They just need to have, we'll have mom and dad tell them on the way to kindergarten on the first day. We'll have blacktop kindergarten roundup, kind of give them the gist of what's gonna happen. Now, when those kids get to the, to the school on the first day and the flatbed pickups and the minivans and the Suburbans start pulling in, we're gonna have a group of us there at the front door and we're gonna run out, we're gonna grab the kindergartner, we're gonna run back in and we're gonna shut the door quick. And the mom's gonna be outside and the kids gonna be inside. Now there's gonna be, we call that abrupt weaning. There's gonna be some bawling and bellering outside. There'll be some bawling and bellering inside, but don't worry about it, it'll subside in two or three days. Now on the immunization, don't do it prior to, we'll just vaccinate them at arrival on initial processing, um, like we do in the beef industry, cuts down on paperwork. And, and so what we'll do is we'll kick the kindergartners up to the end of the hallway on that first day after we get them. Now we got 51 kindergartners this year. We got three classrooms, that's 17 head on a three-way split. We're gonna bring them back one by one, vaccinate them there on arrival. We'll kick them into their classroom and co-mingle them with a bunch of other little kids that they don't know. And, and the good news is we'll only expect about a four to 6% death loss. Think about it, it's what we do every day in the beef industry. I'm really, really uh, passionate about preconditioning, very passionate about preparing these calves for a change of address. Thanks for watching the show. We see you, working hard from the early mornings to the late nights and every hour in between. We see you. We see the pursuit, the desire, the effort, the hope, the goal of being a champion. And we see that you need a partner to keep your animals healthy and happy. With our countless products and quick and reliable shipping together, we can do just that. To the cowboys and cowgirls, to the dreamers, we see you. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part. From the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver, you rely on them to get their job done right, and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'm glad you joined us. We're going to talk about weaning, and, and really what we're talking about is maternal separation. And the first thing to, to the discussion that we get is are what are some of the things that we can do in the pasture that might decrease the stress of, of weaning. And, and one of them is we got to teach these calves how to eat. So what we've seen in this drought is a lot of cows will start to decrease in their milk production and they'll actually wean the calves themselves. And, and when they can't produce enough milk, those calves will start eating grass. And we've seen a lot of self weaning during this, this drought time. Uh, but when we have plenty of grass and some things that we can do, you know, 20, 30 days prior to, to weaning to get these calves acclimated to eating, one of them is, has been creep feed. And there's been debates for years and years and years about, oh, putting the creep feed out for those calves and, and versus, um, but, but if we're not, if we don't have a dry lot situation where we can take those calves and, and put them in there and, and precondition them, where, which means take them away from the cow and put them on feed at the, at the home place for 30 days or 45 days or 60 days, whatever it is. Um, one of the things that could really benefit these calves at weaning time is just creep feeding them and advertising that they've been creep fed because that helps me understand as I buy them that they've, they've learned how to eat out of a bunks, at least some of them, right? Um, and, and there's some research out there that shows that, that calves that are creep fed, 
do a little bit better morbidity wise mortality wise and and behaviorally when they when they get to the to the feed yard because they do know that they can go consume some some dry feed another thing that we uh debate or have a lot of discussion about especially during drought time is what age i can wean them and we see in the in the uh, dairy industry where we put these calves on the bottle for 35 days and then we and we convert them to starter ration and then from starter ration to a to a grower ration okay and and this is 35 40 days and and studies that have been done looking at weaning calves at 55 days or looking at at 100 days or or 180 days have shown that when we wean those calves earlier there are some issues that occur post weaning uh, that, that maybe aren't as good. And, and there is a docility by early wean interaction, meaning that calves that are, are, are more docile will uh, have an easier time at an earlier weaning. But there's more psychological stress and behavioral stress when we wean these calves early off of the mother because they haven't been trained, they haven't started browsing, they haven't started eating. And the more docile they are, the better they handle the early wean. But the, the longer they're, they're on the cow, the better those calves are uh, behaviorally when they come to the feed yard and also the better they are on some of the bad habits. And the big one is, is cross suckling, okay? Early wean calves, tend to have more of an issue with cross suckling when they get to the to the feedlot. And what does cross suckling, why is that a negative? Because if we have a bunch of heifers in a pen in a feed yard and they cross suckle, that suckling activity can actually stimulate some of these heifers to, to bag up and, and lactate. And it's something that when they then go to slaughter that we have issues at the time of slaughter. And so really early wean is only an emergency situation Creep feed can be somewhat of a substitute for preconditioning those calves in a dry lot. When we come back, we're gonna talk about two-stage weaning. You're watching Doc Talk. I'm glad you joined us. Dr. Nels here, folks. We're super excited about this book on hiring. Have you made a bad hire? Have you hired someone you wish you wouldn't have? Are you looking to hire? It's a great short read on helping you in the hiring process. You can find it on Amazon, Kindle, Audible, or find it at drnells.com. Check it out there. We'd love to see you there. As a stocker operator, your job is to turn forage into profit. With the right implant, you can. Revlor G improves grazing performance for 150 days, the same length as the typical grazing period. And it's dosed for stockers' maturity levels, adding up to an extra 23 pounds. See why Revlor G is the number one choice in stocker implants at RevlorG.com. A withdrawal period has not been established in pre-ruminating calves. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. I'm Dr. Les Anderson. I'm a beef extension specialist at the University of Kentucky. The Alert is on Farm Test has the opportunity to completely change the industry. A producer is enabled and empowered to be able to take the sample and run the test or tests at their leisure without scheduling anybody. And honestly, reproduction is the thing that we measure the least, and it's the thing that dictates profitability the most. The Alert is on Farm Test will help us to identify cows that get pregnant early. It'll improve our efficiency tenfold. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. We're going to talk about some ways to do the maternal separation. And one of them that people have tried in the past is what we call a trainer animal, right? And I can just tell you from the research that's published out there, trainer animals are not effective, meaning that they take a yearling and put it in with the calves and let the calves, thinking that the calves would, would watch the yearling and learn how to eat out of the bunk and, and, and not miss mom as much, right? And it's kind of like a guidance counselor, I guess, at a church camp or something to that nature. But we did that once. We took a bunch of high-risk calves that came in balling. We put a Holstein in the pen 
there was a big Holstein with them thinking that that Holstein would train those calves. And we were all excited the next morning we came in um, and, uh, and we found that Holstein, he just, he, the calves trained him. He was walking and bawling with the calves uh, rather than, than, than him training the, the uh, calves. So trainer animals, not effective. So then we have two other methods that, that have been talked about a lot in the literature. Uh, one, and they're both two stage. And, and one of them is, is a nose flap. And is, as you can see here in the picture, that's a nose flap that goes into the nose of the calf that doesn't allow the calf to, to nurse, but we can leave the calf with the cow. And so the calf learns how to graze grass and, and not have the maternal separation and the, the need to learn how to eat going on at the same time. The second one is fence line weaning, where we will put the cows and the calves and just put a fence line between them so they can still communicate, but the calves are on their own and the cows are on, on their own, but they can still see each other through the, the fence. So the research on the, the nose flaps is mixed to say the least. And, and one of the things about the nose flaps is that if you leave them in too long, it causes sores on the noses of the calves. And so I think that's one of the biggest negatives of, of the nose flaps. So when we look at nose flaps and nose flap weaning, the research that's out there that's been published in the multiple papers, very few of them, when you leave the, leave the nose flaps in for seven, 17 days or whatever, show any kind of positive results. Um, the thing is, is nose flaps, you should uh, never leave them in longer than four to five days. Uh, and, and so if you're going to try that type of situation, uh, that would be the, the best scenario is put the nose flaps in four to five days, then pull the calves or separate the cows and the calves, uh, at that point in time. Um, when we look at two stage weaning with fence lines, um, what we'll do is we will put the calves in the fence next to each other. And, and the research there has been more positive on, on a two stage, uh, weaning where where we leave those calves uh, next to their mother for seven days is about what the right amount of time and allow them to still have that interaction and, and the results there are, are much more uh, positive. When you look at the Journal of Animal Science and you look at fence line weaning, one of the things that is apparent is that there is a time factor opposite of what we see with the nose flaps of maximum amount of time. But if you're going to do the, the fence line weaning, you need to do it at least uh, longer than 72 hours, okay? Uh, if you do it for 72 hours or less, those calves, there's no effect, matter of fact, negative effects of fence line weaning compared to just abrupt weaning and, and moving the calves off to a dry lot. Uh, for the most part, it looks like uh, from the published research is you leave those calves there seven days, then separate. We have seen some positive responses in improved performance, uh, improved health, and that from fence line. But at the end of the day, I'll be honest with you, the research on the two-stage weaning, whether it's nose flap or fence line, the jury's still out. We still probably have more things that we can modify and learn. Um, but the one thing that has been evident is that docility matters. The better docility you have in your herd, the better you have regardless of the weaning method you use. We're gonna come back to Doc Talk. Thanks for watching today. We are a start to finish yard, bring them in at 500 pounds and finish them out to 14 to 1500 pounds. Max capacity is about 15,000. We begin with the end in mind, which that means it starts from day one coming off the truck. Heard all sorts of stuff about the, the generics coming out from you know a few different companies here and there, but we've started working with Bimita. What I like about working with Bimita is our rep. You know, he's, he seems like he's just a, one of us. Kind of, he knows he's been in the cattle feeding industry for a long time. He understands where we're coming from, what goes on in the feed yard. So we started implementing Mackerson last July, and uh, we're using it as our, our first pole treatment. The, the data shows that the success rates on BRD, you know, they're equivalent to the other macro lights that we were we were using. You know, we just feel fortunate enough, I guess, to get our hands on it and it, it works great for us for a you know first pole treatment. So what really jumped out to us working with 
by Mita meeting with the rep, Mackerson's Affordable, we finally got a product that everybody can afford. We try to do the little things right, whether it's from low stress cattle handling, animal welfare, how we work with the cattle every single day, you know, that's something we really focus on. But when you've got a product like a Mackerson, it's just another assurance protecting you, controlling your BRD from what stressors are thrown out there or what Mother Nature is going to bring to you. This industry, it, it takes everybody, uh, whether it's working with the nutritionist, it's cowboys working with the veterinarians, everybody plays a part and uh, we expect them to do their jobs but also we expect you know the the drugs or what we put into the cattle to do their job too and I think these Bimeda products they're proven that they're doing the job for us. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk, Dr. Dan Thompson. We're talking about weaning. So, regardless of how we separate them, whether it's two-stage, early wean, uh, abrupt weaning, there comes a point in time these calves are in a dry lot and we gotta feed them, okay? So the question I get a lot of times is, what do I put in that weaning ration? So when those calves come in, the first thing is, is I like to use cereal grass hay or something that first two or three days when they come in, and I allow those calves to consume some hay. I'll put some uh, milled ration or, or, or one ration on top of that hay. And, and my one ration, my weaning ration, that starting ration for receiving calves is going to be about 60% concentrate. So 60% corn, 40% hay. Uh, I'm going to have 14% uh, crude protein, which really hasn't been a problem because we feed a lot of distillers today. Um, and that's 30% crude protein. But if we don't feed distillers and we have a, a corn hay based ration, we're going to want to use a natural protein like soybean meal, cottonseed meal, something to that nature, because these calves don't have that functioning rumen yet, okay? So we don't wanna feed non-protein nitrogen like urea because the microbes aren't there yet to, to, to really have an effect. And, and when you look at the, the research by Galleon, by, by different people that have looked at receiving calf rations, we want to be 60% concentrate, 40% roughage, 14% crude protein, um, and we want it to be a natural protein source that'll, that will allow the calf to, to get the proper nutrients. A calf that is newly weaned versus one that's been on feed, they don't have different requirements, they have different intake levels. And the calf that's stressed will have a decreased intake, so we have to fortify that ration more. As they come up on intake, we can decrease some of the percentages of crude protein and things to that nature. But at this critical time of that calf being weaned, it's not a time to skimp. So what are some other things that we look at in that, that starting ration? Uh, we will look at our, our vitamin E levels. When you look at some of the work by Dave Seacrest down at Oklahoma State, we want to be at 1,600 international units of vitamin E a day. Uh, on these calves consuming it, which is four times the NRC, because vitamin E is very important to the immune system, very important to the antioxidants, uh, to decrease uh, oxidative stress with, within the animal. Uh, vitamins or minerals that, that we, will, we will look at are obviously the ones that the, the selenium, copper, zinc, uh, are, are, are big ones that, that we're gonna look at that have uh, huge impacts on, on antioxidants and decreasing stress. So those are ones that, that work with your nutritionist, make sure that you have the proper level in that receiving ration. And, and so the last thing I'll say on weaning calves is acclimation. The sooner we can decrease the stress between you and the animals, the better. The, having those animals understand that you're a caregiver, that they crave uh, attention from you as they come out, as you come out into the, the uh, pen, will decrease the amount of stress when they go to the feedlot and they see a pen rider or they see a human being, uh, understanding that that's not a predator, that that's someone there to provide them care. Docility matters. If the cattle don't trust humans, they don't show clinical signs. And if they don't show clinical signs, we can't find them when they're sick. 
So trust, building trust, providing proper nutrition, uh, proper maternal, maternal separation. We didn't even talk about the vaccines. We didn't even talk about the dewormers because when it gets down to it at the end of the day, husbandry is what matters and taking care of these cattle that take care of us is so important. That's why I love what I do. I love being a part of this beef industry. I love being a veterinarian and I love doing Doc Talk. Thanks for watching. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to find out more about what we do, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here in central Iowa, and I'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of All Flex Livestock Intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. To spur performance and productivity in your herd, look to Bovalus Vision 7, powered by the proprietary Spur adjuvant allowing smoother administration and fewer reactions for effective low-stress clostridial protection. And low stress equals higher weaning weights, a proven 14-pound advantage. With a gain like that, you're spurring profits too. That's what you get with the number one clostridial vaccine for calves, proven protection that spurs all-around forward progress.